ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Good evening. It is Sunday, the 5th of July. I'm Dave McClond. Welcome to my little office for another edition of Mockdown. This week, we're going to talk about how things are looking for pantomime, how things are looking for theatre, how a couple of actor mates are coping during this time of COVID crisis. So we'll find out what's been going on with them and what they've been up to. Let me introduce my guests for this evening. I'm working from three different screens here, so it all gets a little bit confusing. My first guest, I have to switch to another uh, page here. My first guest, Chris Clarkson. Now, Chris, uh, let's get a picture of Chris here for you. Hang on a second. It's coming. It's coming. There he is. Let's bring him in. Uh, there we go. That's Chris. Uh, Chris Clarkson trained at Bretton Hall. When he's not acting, Chris works as a voiceover, a presenter, and a magician. He's rugby mad. Apparently, he likes men with odd shaped balls. He follows his hometown team, the Leicester Tigers. We're going to ask about Leicester, too. What's happening in Leicester? Uh, his panto credits are wide and varied. Uh, he's appeared in uh, 18 pantos in roles from The Prince way back when he was just a boy actor through the comic to the dame he's acted at the lowry coventry swindon barry st edmunds harrogate stevenage wellingborough kendall and tewkesbury as well as doing tons of other theater too he's been in blood brothers the taming of the shrew mackers how the other half loves and more and don't forget he's on the telly as well coronation street touch of frost emma dale royal today my parents aliens Blah, blah, blah. He's done that. And he's on commercials too. My favorite of which is the Ron Seal commercial. Always a favorite. Uh, let's bring him in. Hang on a second. I've got to get to the right screen here. Come on in, Chris Clarkson. Hello there, David. There he is. Uh, let's make him bigger. There we are. Chris, how are you, dear boy? Um, I'm not as good as I was when that photo was taken pre-lockdown. That's. <laughs> uh, I know. Well, I've seen you doing... That. Seen, seen you doing some uh, Dame promo stuff in all the gear with a mask over your face to hide that beardy growth that you have. That's right. Not so much promo stuff, but more begging stuff for the theatre. But yes. Yeah. Look at you, though. You, you're all set up there with a home studio. You've got the whole kit and caboodle there, haven't you? Yes, I'm very lucky because I've been working as a voiceover for a, a while. I've got my own booth here um, along with uh, a little lighting rig and you can that's my auto cue in the corner as well for when I'm uh, doing some presenting work from home. So it works out quite well. Oh, great. Well, we're going to talk to you in, in a, just a moment or two and we'll find out what the heck's been going on and what you're up to these days. So let me go back to me. It's an awkward little uh, scroll that I have to do here. There we go. Uh, my next guest, let's bring up his name here. Uh, Ian Fox. Let's get Ian's photo here. Uh, let's bring him up. Ian, where are you, old boy? There he is. Let's make it. Can I make him bigger? Let's make Ian bigger. Come on. There we go. Uh, Ian first appeared in the Britain Opera, and you'll tell me how to pronounce this later, Noise Flutel, and he toured with the Midland Boy Singers uh, in the UK and Europe all before the age of 13. I'm sure there's story to tell about all of that stuff. After a music degree at Exeter University, he appeared in Sweeney Todd, West Side Story, Nosferatu, the Vampire, and Guys and Dolls. Since 1996, He's been uh, working with the professional company Pendle Productions as a singer, actor, director, and administrator, and that's where I met him. As a pantomime dame, 
He's appeared in Babes in the Woods, Cinderella, Sinbad, Dick Whittington, Jack and the Beanstalk, Peter Pan, Aladdin, you name it. On the Isle of Man, he's played mm -hmm. King Hubert in Sleeping Beauty and Shrek in Shrek the Musical. Uh, he's a member of a musical theatre group, Voices and Lyrics, and they're making their West End debut, fingers crossed, next year after many appearances in the Northwest. He's recently played Baron Bombast in Chi 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 Bang Bang. Chi Chi Bang Bang, Chi 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 Bang Bang. We'll sing that one later. Um, uh, he was in uh, Hello Dolly, The Wind in the Willows, and hopefully he's going to be reprising his role in Shrek the Musical in 2021. I wondered about this that he's currently doing. He's preparing for a production of Saucy Jack and the Space Vixens. Uh, mm, that's interesting. He's musical director and playing Dr. Von Wackoff. During lockdown, he's presented his bedroom studio videos every day with over 200 songs posted to social media. He's done the lot. Let's bring him in. Hello, Chris. How are you? Uh, hello, Ian. How are you? Hello. Hello, I'm fine. Thanks. Hi, Dave. There you are. Uh, Dr. Von Wackoff? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, it's a bit of a culty show, um, <laughs> Saucy, Vic, uh, Saucy Jack and Space Vixens. I remember it. It actually started when I first, on my first job when I was in Edinburgh, they were they were doing it there. That was the very first time it went out. The create it was like the creators thing, um, yeah. and it's become a bit of a cult. It's got a cult following, um, and a friend of mine has wanted to do it again. He's done it a couple of times, but he's wanted to do it with us <laughs> yeah. for a while. So we will be doing it at some point. I'll tell you more about it in a bit. <laughs> yeah, lovely. I I want to know as well. How many people have you had in your bedroom over the course of lockdown? It must be in the <laughs> hundreds. Uh, well. Only virtually. No one's been here. It's just been me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, now I've got quite a little bit of a following now, which is quite nice. I didn't expect it to happen. Um, yeah. It was just for fun. But uh, yeah, I'm carried on doing it. <laughs> I was checking out uh, what you were doing today, your Hollis tribute. I have to say, when you did the, the air that I breathe, I think you should have been wearing a mask and ripped it off uh, <laughs> for the air that I breathe. Yeah, some songs are big. I did. I do an occasional series. I've got lots of occasional series in it, yeah. um, and one of them was songs that have become inappropriate or more appropriate since lockdown, um, yeah. like "Don't Stand So Close to Me" and things like yes. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's tons of that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. Listen, I. This is a week. Uh, the start of the week, like last weekend. Um, the, there was this kind of news that was coming out that it looks like theatres aren't going to be able to have pantomime seasons. And over the course of lockdown through equity, we've had lots of meetings with uh, industry people from the Crucible Theatre, uh, the um, theatre uh, play, the uh, oh, Leeds, <laughs> the uh, Theatre Royal in York, uh, Hull Truck, and all of them depend on that pantomime, which is the big money winner that was going to keep them going. And they're holding on and holding on just to hope that they can do that pantomime. But it's it's looking rather tricky, isn't it? Um, and so I don't know what stage you guys are at with pantomimes because you're both regulars. But what do you think of the state of the industry? Let, let's go to you first, Chris. Let me make you bigger here. What do you think of how things stand? You're also involved with equity, so you've been in some of these negotiations. Uh, well, yeah, I've not actually been in the negotiations. No, no. Staff as opposed to as members. But yes, I am on the uh, the branch committee here in Manchester. Um, I I think the, the report that came out in the Times, I haven't read it, but I've seen snippets of it, is a very sombre, gloomy uh, way of looking at everything. And it is just one report. So yeah. I'm not necessarily going with that. Yes, I still have optimism. Because if you haven't got optimism, what have you got? Let's be honest. Exactly. I still think there may be a chance that it can happen. I know a lot of theatres are still hoping to do it. Um, in the West End, I, I forget the name of the show, but one of them wants to open in oh. October or November. Isn't it uh, the Mousetraps opening in October? Oh, a socially yeah. distanced Mousetrap. Social distance one, but there's a, a new musical opening, and I forget yes. the name of it now. And they're still hoping as well. So it, it, it depends on who you want to believe, to be honest with you. And at the moment, I'm all about believing the ones that sound nice. Yeah, I mean, it, it is such a, a huge thing. And I, I want to just bring in a photo 
here that I've I've cat I've been trolling through your Facebook pages here. Uh Chris, here we go. That was two years look, ago. look at that photo. I mean, that is a traditional uh, kind of panto cast there, and it's a, a lovely group of people. You work bloody hard. It's show hard after show year. after show. It is the hardest job of the year, but it's also the most rewarding. Yeah. I love panto. I absolutely adore it. And yeah. you can see in this photo here, I was uh, that's the crew, obviously, and the band that I was working with. Yeah. Uh, that's not a really dark set of costumes. Um, the, the people that we get, oh, crikey, yeah, Harrogate. Oh, geez, that was about eight years ago. Mm. Um, it's 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 great fun. It's the hardest job that you can do in the year. Physically, it is draining. Mentally, it is exhausting. Yeah. But it's so enjoyable, not just yeah. to actually perform in it, but also the reaction you get from, well, from the adults a lot for the dame role, but from the, the kids who, when it's their first time at the theatre and they're just loving it and screaming and pointing and shouting, he's there, he's there, no, he's over there, look, not moving their seat, not leaving their seat at all. Bum is still attached to it because they're still British. But yeah, yeah. Oh, over there, he's over. And just the, the, the happiness that you can instill in families is just second to none. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I was worried about theatre when they stopped you throwing uh, sweets out, you know, for health and safety reasons. Uh, but... That depends on what theatre you're at. Ah, there we go. Because I don't know Ian's experience, but I've, I've worked in a lot of different theatres. I've not just been in the same place uh, my whole career. And certain theatres have different ways of doing it. And as an example, admittedly, this was a while ago now. This was when I was in Coventry doing Sleeping Beauty. Um, Two-tier auditorium, stalls and uh, balcony. I don't know what the official name is. Stalls and balcony. And uh, the comic and the dame, I was the prince that year because it was way back when. Uh, I uh, I was at backstage, but they got some boiled sweets and they were throwing them out and they couldn't reach up to the top balcony. So what they did is they reached in to a well randomly on stage and brought a tennis racket out and tennis racketed these sweets up onto the top balcony. So health and safety, health and safety. Yes, <laughs> there we fun. go. I have another picture uh, of you as well, Chris. Um, Slightly worried. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> th this one sums up... Uh, panto for me it's that downtime between shows when you sit there and your costume never ever dries out between shows <laughs> yeah pretty much and the you other sat there I've with there, wet boobs i can see on my ipad there i've got rugby playing as well so i was clearly in my happy place yes <laughs> I, I want to ask you something else a, a little secret that you have about your 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 bosoms i can see where this is going yeah yes you secrete something in your in your bosoms don't you I, I do. I do. Well, I, I always try and have hollow tits. Right. And so I can keep my mic pack inside one of my boobs. And yes. because sometimes it becomes a little bit lopsided, if you have on one side and not the other, I will secrete a small bottle of usually gin inside the other one, like the ones you get on a plane, that sort yes. of thing. Yes, yes. Um, I can't get to it when I'm during the show, obviously. I just no. have no knowledge that I'm on stage with a little mini bottle of gin whilst I'm talking, telling jokes and sitting on blokes' laps. Yeah, I find that amusing. And then my little ritual is that the, after the very, very final show of the run, I will take that bottle of gin to the bar, probably quite warm, and I will drink it <laughs> there and then. And it uh, must be extra thick distilled <laughs> gin, just down yeah. to the very essence of alcohol. By the time you get to the end of a run, a lot by the time it gets drunk. That's for sure. <sighs> it was one God. year as well that I couldn't have my mic pack in my boot because it was a particular costume when I had to take my bra off. So um, I essentially had two hollow tits. And I thought, oh, I could just not have anything in them at all. But I decided, no, I'm going to go the other way with that. I kept a bottle, of port, a, a bottle of port in the other boob. So I had gin on one side and port on that side. Uh, port being the left-hand side boob. Indeed. <laughs> yes. Uh, nautical. Nautical tradition. Very much so. Very much so. <sighs> what, what if you trip, though? I hope they're those little plastic bottles. <laughs> no, no, they were glass. I don't trip. I don't do anything active enough to trip when I'm living playing. dangerous, <laughs> living danger, dangerously. Walk on, go to downstage center, do my bit, yeah. and then walk off. That's yeah, it. exactly. Uh, Ian, yes, <laughs> we first met sharing Dick together, didn't we? Dick Whittington, we did. It was quite a while ago now, but yeah, we did. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, let, let's see what I've got of you here. Um, oh, variety, yes, Peter Pan. A couple of years ago, that was Peter Pan. That was that was a good one. That was a lovely show. The dress in the middle was my favourite because it was made for me. <laughs> oh, were, were they the whole of the costumes that you wore for that show? Um, or were there more? No, there was more than that. I, 
uh, um, the pineapple one. Oh, I don't think I wore the pineapple one. I wore the pineapple one, which is all sequins and and uh, a big collar, um, and fruit on the head, <laughs> in a turban. So that was in there somewhere as well. Yeah. Um, you know what Abhanto's like. <laughs> so, um, my dame is a very active dame, um, because I'll we all say. are. Yes. <laughs> Uh, dancing and all sorts of things. Um, <laughs> I wish I could just walk down stage and just do my bit <laughs> with, a, um, with a gin so, and a port like that for me. <laughs> but in theory, that's what I so, like. Yes. Yeah, sometimes, um, yeah, I had four or five. I only had four or five because I went back to the middle dress in that one. Um, but uh, there was a bit of me. It wasn't me, obviously, falling out of the ceiling. Um, there's all sorts of uh, very silly things. Um, because I was essentially I was Mrs. Smee in in it. We we slightly changed it all around, but I was still Mrs. Smee. I started off as the um, the children's nurse as well yeah. as the dog, <laughs> and then became Mrs. Smee on the pirate ship. I wasn't the dog. The dog. We were both nurses, um, right? So uh, it uh, so we sort of all had, we had double characters yeah, in that, yeah. in our Peter Pan. Yeah, yeah, it was a good one. That one. <laughs> I've I've never been a dame. I've I've, I've often coveted that role but never been i i've done them uh, amateur dames I, I, I dressed as a lady uh, you know for <laughs> recreational purposes but never <laughs> professionally i've i've been king charming and uh alderman fitzwarren uh, there we go but uh, let's see what else i have of you ian uh come on what have we got there there we are oh yeah there you go that that, that was my finale there stick some feathers on yeah <laughs> at the end Look yeah. at that. And I've got more of you here as well. Uh, let's have a look at this oh. one. I think this was just after That's... you came out of court, wasn't it? <laughs> That's at a wedding. Now, you see, the thing is with, with, with photos like that, I get loads of comments on Facebook. Oh, you look really different. You look really smart. And then eventually someone will go, oh, yeah, it's because you're not wearing a dress. Because <laughs> <laughs> most of my photos are usually panto. Yeah, so, um, yeah. yeah, people are surprised when they see me in a suit or boy clothes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I, I have one more to share of you as well. Um, um, and yeah, I've never was, seen yeah. such lack of effort put into blowing a kazoo <laughs> in my entire life. That's was, quite that a was just a, That was the beginning of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Were you wedi wedding singering? On that uh, occasion? At the church, not, a, not at the um, reception, yeah. um, but I did at the church. Yes, so it was in the signing of the registers. Yeah, yeah. Quite a frequent job. Yeah, oh my. The days, the days. <laughs> uh, it's a few years since I've done Panto, and I, I must say I, I miss it, but, you know, th those days can be awfully long when they're three show days and well, and more. Uh, but yeah. there we go. But they are, I mean, it, it's, it's a uniquely British tradition, but it's not only, you mentioned, Chris, the introduction to children to come along with their families and it's often their first theater job that they'll see but there's also all that community aspect of all the child dancers that come in all the dance schools that are in there and it's their first big experience of being in a show it is something really special for those people isn't it yeah very much so the um different pantos work in different ways i know yeah. where i've been for the last few years we've had two teams of eight kids who've all been brilliant and it's been so much fun getting to know them and uh, a few of them come back for a, a year after year until they're yeah. too old and they start doing GCSEs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's nice to become friends with them and become friends with their parents too. Yeah, but yeah. But about having children in, uh, involved in the audience as well. Uh, last year, the show we did, we did Peter Pan last year and we had just over 25,000 tickets sold throughout the course of the run. And the average party size, if you take sort of the block bookings of schools out from the early days of the run, the average party size was six people. And that's a family, a family of six. Wow. So that shows just how important Panto is to families. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've, we've had a, a comment. Uh, funnily enough, we, we've, had, we've had a thumbs up and we've also had an angry face. Chris Arkley says, <laughs> I do miss those Panto days. Hello, Chris Arkley. That's the first time I met Chris Arkley uh, at Panto. And yes, we all miss those Panto days, don't we? Uh, we do at the moment. <laughs> Ian, I, I know uh, the, the Panto that we did as well. Huge groups of dancing children. 
Uh, I mean, yes. crazy zoo-like conditions. Yes, we have. Um, we have had up to seven teams of about 24, 25 kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't do things by harvest down in Blackburn. No, um, no. We, <laughs> the, the but last, the last couple all of their six, families have to come, don't they? Well, yes. Yeah, that's it. So, I mean, that's that's the good thing. And they come multiple times as well. Yeah. So, that, I mean, it's great for sales. I think this is the this is the first casualty, I think. If we can go ahead, I think it's going to be really difficult this year to have groups like that involved involved we might be able to put small things small groups of kids in but then of course you know we leave it to the dance schools to choose and <laughs> let yeah. let them light the touch paper and step back but so i don't know whether that's going to be a possibility this year of course because i mean it's, it physically it's the space i mean we don't have a lot of space anyway a lot of a lot of the places that we perform at yeah um i mean all three of or two well we have a tour that goes out um we we did um we used to do a run over in tameside at the council venues over in tameside some of those didn't, they didn't even have one dressing room let alone room for kids and we still had big teams of kids yeah i think it's the physical space not being able to separate people is going to yeah. be the first obstacle but then are we going to get schools in at all um as audience are we going to get um schools allowing the kids to have their time off like they normally get you know it's, it's going to be a big obstacle definitely yeah. and what about you know the the panto horse or panto cow is that going to have to be a panto dax hund to get the social distancing within a costume well no you can do <laughs> well if you're in a cow you, you're probably at one plus meters <laughs> <If> you... <laughs> i don't know um... you're gripping onto the 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 rear of the person in front of you for dear That's life okay. and hoping they don't but... have flatulence but then you see Disney, all the Disney stuff's happening at the yeah. Disney parks and they're in, you know, they're in big costumes and they're not obviously miles apart because they're completely encased. Yeah. So yeah. we will have to see, you know, what is, I think the, the, the difficulty is that it's changing by the day, not even by yeah. the week now. We're getting different things all the time. So I know people are really eager to, um, to get on with it and people are very eager as well to start shouting about it, but it's changing so quickly. I don't yeah. think I agree with Chris. We've got to be positive. We see all the negative, And I think if we accept the negative, everything above that is a bonus yeah, <laughs> at the yeah. moment. So every tiny little step forward is, is going to be a bonus at the moment. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I, th I mean, I don't know about you guys, but there's supposed to be this budget announcement, isn't there on, on Wednesday? And people are plugging away. Please do something for the creative arts. You know, the, the industry needs something. Any hope, do you think? What do you think, Chris? Do you think he might throw us a line? Well, um, without this going incredibly political very quickly, I have absolutely <laughs> no trust or faith in the Tory party at all. So hmm. I, I, I don't think they would do off their own back if they had a choice. But yeah. we're putting, collectively putting a lot of pressure on them. So maybe they will at some point. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I you can't second guess this sort of thing. I don't reckon. No, no, I mean, um, it, it seems now that they've kind of given up on all that support. I remember Rishi Sunak at the beginning of this, I will do anything that needs to be done. And uh, now it's all coming to an end. The pubs are open, everything's all right now. And the scenes that were on the streets of London with the people coming outside of pubs, it was just horrendous, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it, it, yes. When you when you consider, it's fine. What was it, it, I'm guessing what was going on inside was sitting at their tables and one at the bar at a time. But then nobody accounted for all the people outside. Yeah. So, um, you know, it makes it really difficult. I've got a lot of friends who run dance and theatre schools, and of course, they're not allowed to do anything at the moment. Yeah. But then I drove past football training for kids the other day, and they're allowed to do their stuff. And yeah, I think yeah. it, 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 there's general frustration, I think, with flexibility in the rules and people's interpretation of it and things. Um, but like I say, because it's changing so fast, I think we've just got to, we can't react in one day. We've got to, we can be cross, I think. We can be cross about things, but tomorrow it might be completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, coming up, I, I, I don't know, um, I, I did mention it to you on our little WhatsApp chat, but there is this creative performance project protest project coming up this this weekend um and i know in sheffield it's noon 
on Saturday, the 11th of July. It's outside the Crucible on Lyceum. And the, the aim is to get lots of creatives there to show what life would be like without a performance. So you start doing a performance and then stop. Uh, so you may begin the first line of a monologue and then give it up after that. And I know I have plans to do something. Um, and, and that mine will be along that, that route. I know there's one in Manchester as well, is there, Chris? Noon? There is indeed. On Saturday, on the... St. Saint Anne's Square? I believe so. Yeah, that's yeah. the one directly outside the Royal Exchange, uh, which recently announced up to 65% job losses. So very pertinent place to have it. Yeah. Uh, it will be happening. Yeah, I, I can't go, unfortunately. I, I'm, I'm kind of torn, really, because protesting is obviously a very important thing to do if you feel strongly enough about stuff. But also some people might not feel they're able to, particularly in the current scenario. Yeah. Not oh, yeah. About being there, but getting there on public transport. Um, personally, I won't actually be in Manchester <laughs> that weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've I've been by myself throughout this, and I formed a bubble when we started to be able to form bubbles. So I'm actually driving down to Suffolk uh, this week. And Lovely. And I don't think there is one in Suffolk, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'm no. a local one. Uh, small uh, point of interest. Uh, they have the, the bubble in Canada, but there they call it the buble. <laughs> no, it's definitely a wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Oh well. Uh it's it's interesting because I did I lived and worked in Canada for a number of years and it's interesting to watch how they're coping with things. And uh the maritime provinces of Canada have just become their own bubble of three provinces. And so anybody who comes from outside those areas has to quarantine themselves. And there, there have been three, four outbreaks, but it's all people that have come in either from the States or from somewhere else in Canada. And it's it's scary how fast something like that can take hold when you when you release things. And that's what worries me about this whole pub business. I mean, I wouldn't have gone near a pub last night. Bonkers. Yeah. No, I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> I didn't go anywhere. Have, um <laughs> Have you been out and about in Blackpool at all, Ian? Um, because um, I know some of the scenes bit. like Bournemouth was were crazy. Has it been bad in, in Blackpool? I think on the day that all that happened down in Bournemouth, there was there were quite a lot of people in Blackpool on the beach. Obviously, it was hot and people were going to do it anyway. If, yeah. if you get a, even slight instruction from the authorities to say that you can do something, like go to the beach, people are going to do it. Um, I think it was okay. I understand that it was... Um, I did. I, I was in St Anne's a little while ago, and the beach actually was okay. People were very distanced on the beach, but then on Lytham Green, people were getting closer and closer and closer. Yeah. Um, there. So, but the trouble is, at Blackpool, when the tide came in, everyone just sort of shunted further and further and further back until they were really crammed into a small space. Um, a good friend of mine works in the town. She's been working all the way through because she works at the bank. Yeah. Um, so all the banks in Blackpool are quite close together. So there's been all for things like that. There's always been great big long queues, but generally the town's been a ghost town. Yeah. There's not been much there. But that's I I heard that places were very busy last night. I was asked whether I would want to go out or not, but I didn't understand why I'd want to go out in Blackpool when there's no entertainment. Mm. The whole thing about Blackpool is entertainment. I can see my friends and go, we can have a drink in their garden or whatever in exactly the same way rather than going and spending money on bars. It's all about the entertainment. If we can't do that, I don't, I think it's going to be a novelty. It will, it was busy last night. I suspect it will be busy tonight. Um, and I think it will wane a little bit because there isn't anything else to do. I don't, there isn't anything else to do. Yeah. Until, we, you know, we can get something back on again. Because we we all are looking forward to going back out in Blackpool, but really, me and my friends, we go out for the entertainment. Yeah, that's that's the thing. So, that's yeah, we're not one. venturing, not venturing out uh, anytime soon. Not until we have further instructions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chris, I know some of the pictures I've seen from Manchester. It's it has been like a ghost town in the centre of Manchester as well for the longest time, hasn't it? Uh, I think so. Uh, I've only been into the city centre once, and that was probably about three or four weeks ago when I went to donate blood. Yeah, and it was, it wasn't 
a complete ghost town. There were still plenty of people because quite a few people live in the city centre anyway. Yeah. But it was a hell of a lot quieter than I've ever, ever seen it before, which yeah. was really quite eerie. I cycled in. It's um about a six mile ride. And it was very quiet on the road going in and out as well. So it was actually a really lovely bike ride in. Yeah, yeah. Bike ride out. But uh, yeah, really quite apocalyptic almost at times. I know. A friend of mine takes photographs and puts them on Instagram. And it, that I thought if you had a film crew and you wanted to get that post-apocalyptic footage, go out and do it now because ideal situation you know the streets are just deserted yeah. i live by one of the main streets into sheffield and it's still very very quiet um last weekend i went into the city center and around the theater it was very very quiet uh but then i finally met a queue outside um sports direct people was queuing to get into sports direct i mean they must have worn all their trainers out during the <laughs> their lockdown runs or something what is that about well, I think there is a, a, a slight misconception there about some people just going in and buying clothes. If you've got a small child uh, who was starting to burst out Incredible Hulk style of their clothes in March, then, the yeah, they need new clothes. And Sports Direct is a cheap shop, yeah. same as Primark, etc. So I think there are there are certainly mitigating factors for some shops being quite busy. Yes. But even so, there are still some morons. <laughs> Um, you mentioned you you have a bubble. Do you have a bubble, Ian? Do you have a bubble? You've got a bubble. Um, a not bubble? not really. I just <laughs> I, the friend I've just mentioned that works at the bank. We have socialised, yeah. um, and that's sort of it, really. I also one of one of my best friends is my dance teacher, yeah. and um, so I have seen and and then uh, her assistant is also a good friend of mine, and so we've seen each other and we've gone for walks, um, but. To be honest, because I'm <laughs> Fleetwood was only meant to be a temporary thing. <laughs> I wasn't ever going to live here forever. How um, many years is so, it now? Oh, 14 years I've lived here. <laughs> uh, um, so all of my friends are everywhere. So I've, I mean, really and truly, it has been video call central. Been doing a yeah. lot of video calling. You know, my, my family now, my immediate family live on the Isle of Man, of course. Yeah. Um, so I haven't been, a, I mean, they, that was just locked down. That was completely locked down. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't have gone to see them anyway. So I've been speaking to my dad and my sister, um, on FaceTime and things. So, uh, yeah, that's what, that's mostly what it's been. So I haven't, I haven't really been very far. <laughs> I yeah. did the whole running thing. I did couch to 5k at the beginning, um, just to fill up some time. So, uh, so yeah, so I have the way I've seen people is literally, via technology and i've been rehearsing saucy jack as well we've been rehearsing on zoom yeah which has its own special <laughs> <Hell. foibles. laughs> indeed, indeed. i want to ask you about saucy jack i didn't know about that you until uh okay. Dave's introduction i was obsessed with that show at the edinburgh yeah. festival in 1996 yeah it was wonderful it was um c2 i seem to remember mm -hmm. the venue c2 and i went i believe eight times over the course of the well two or three weeks that I was there, hopefully we we <laughs> we we should have done it. It should have been now. It should have been the first week of July. We were doing it, um, and it the show set in a in a cabaret bar. So we were doing it. It's it's a I don't I assume we can we'll still be at the same venue. It's a venue that's just off Canal Street um, in Manchester. So we'll be doing it there. Um, so we we hadn't got that far into rehearsals really. We we literally just started three or four weeks into rehearsals uh and then we had a, obviously a bit of a hiatus and then we decided that we'd give it a go trying to rehearse on zoom so i and i've got to do some tonight and tomorrow i've been preparing every every single person's vocal line because well as well as being in it i'm teaching everybody all the vocals so recording all that sending that out then we of course we can't sing together on zoom or anything because we're all at different times so we have to sit there and listen to each other do our individual lines um and i just check that everyone's on the right track the dialogue's okay you know you don't you don't notice the delay too much yeah um but no we're having a great time doing it even remotely and um you know i think it's a, it is actually a really good show um as i say it's, it's got cult status now and um but i think 
we're trying to do something as different as we can because I think everyone can put their own little spin on it. So we're keeping exactly to what it is. But I'm really concentrating on the vocals. You know me, Dave, and my vocals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I'm really concentrating on getting everybody and arranging it out because there is no, it just says backing vocal one, two, three, and four. So I can choose who does what. So I mean, everybody's really different. Cast are great. Um, they're all very separate characters and we all bring different voices, literal voices to it everyone is is different sounds different so i think it's going to be quite a special show you know it's a bit naughty most people don't, have not seen me do anything for grown-ups yeah, um, yeah because i do a lot of family theater panto and all that so when i've been telling people they've been quite surprised yeah i would do something like that i have done other things but they just don't know me for that so it's, no. it's, it's going to be good no they, they don't so, they don't look at you and think whack off do they well, I hope many... not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I should say Dr. Von Wacker. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we, the Manchester Fringe, we were, we were just coinciding with the Manchester Fringe. Yeah. Um, so it would have been, that would have been great because we'd have had a, extra audience, really. Um, that's been tentatively postponed, but they've not given a date. It's October, November. Um but obviously that's going to it is whether or not we can do entertainment indoors like that. Yeah. Um, other than that, we'll do it whenever, whenever we can, we shall do it. The thing that's confused me today, particularly on the last couple of days is the crystal maze is open. Oh, right. I don't get how the crystal. Yeah. Because um, you'll know a lot of people as well, Dave, actually that you probably don't know work there, but yeah, yeah. you'll know people that work there. And a lot of my friends work there, but it's open and I don't, Perhaps somebody can shed some light on it. So I don't quite know how that's working because they've yeah. definitely opened up like this week now. We've got so. a couple of comments coming in. Hang on a second. Uh, here's one. Um, oh, let's bring it in again. Uh, Julie Sega. Oh, Julie. Uh, that's, that's my dance teacher. Yeah. yeah. You can drink in crowds <laughs> inside and out, pubs, and we can't open our dancing schools. That's what we were saying. Uh, perhaps if the dancers drink, it'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe. yeah Ju Julie, Julie is my long-suffering dance teacher. She's the principal of Hotfoot Dance Club in St. Anne's. That's where yeah. I go. I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. <laughs> so uh, we've got a show lined up as well. We were meant to be doing a show. Uh, that would have been this week as well. So that's postponed. Uh, she's, she's replied again. Good idea. Good idea. I think that, yeah. that's for the dancers <laughs> drinking. There we go. Yeah. Uh, we've got another comment coming in here. Phil Yarrow, who was my guest a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, really hope that Panto can go ahead this year. Uh, I know Phil does a lot of uh, theatre for young people as well, which, of course, is, is another area that is just completely um, in uncertainty at the moment, isn't it? Uh, don't forget, it's not just panto, though, at Christmas time, because there no. are a lot of Christmas shows out there. Not every theatre puts a panto on, but it still tries to get lots and lots of bums on seats because it's the one time you can pretty much guarantee people are going to want to go out to be entertained. Yeah, yeah. And, but talking with the industry people that we've talked through on the uh, the equity forum things that I mentioned, you know, places like the, the Lyceum Theatre in, in Sheffield, lovely theatre, you know, it's big classical theatre, and uh, even if you manage to space people out inside to meet the specifications, it's the getting in and out because it's an old theatre, so it's got all those old corridors. It's it's just dodgy doing that kind of stuff, isn't it? Potentially, yeah, very much so. Yeah, uh, lots of theatres are old buildings as a general rule. You do get yeah. some nice new ones, but even then, we'll still have bottlenecks that were designed not thinking about global pandemics in mind. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you, uh, you know, the lockdown, has it meant that you've missed out on stuff? And I know, Ian, you mentioned you were supposed to be doing that show. Is there stuff that you've missed out on, Chris, that you were due to be doing that has yes. been cast aside? Uh, yes and no. No uh, theatre productions particularly, but I gig a lot. So yeah. um, I've lost quite a lot of magic gigs. I know, uh, Ian, you said you you sing at weddings. I I do magic at weddings. So there's been a whole whole raft of summer weddings cancelled, well, postponed. Yeah. Um, fortunately, I've been able to still do some voiceover work, which has been nice. Uh, but that's only luckily because I have the setup here at home to be able to do it. Yeah. 
and also the, the the technical knowledge in how to do it because I started out just being a, a performer voiceover, not knowing how to actually press record and all that kind of shizzle. Yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm count my blessings that I was able to do that a year or so ago to really become competent at it enough to be able to run it from home. But even then, there's not been that much VO work out there for me anyway. Yeah. I know, I know so many uh, friends in the Sheffield area who've set up their own home studios um, just over the past few months. I w was on the uh, WhatsApp chat with uh, a gent who's in his 70s, quite well known to everybody, and he was setting up um, his his booth. So I was doing it all through WhatsApp video chat, telling him where to set it up, where to put his step ladder, to put his duvet around, all of that kind of stuff. Your friend Julie has another comment here. I'm oh. glad she's watching. I'm loving this. <laughs> uh, come on, bring it in. There we go. Oh. Uh, there you go. You forgot to mention. There she's the choreographer for Blackpool <laughs> Operatics. Operatics. Uh, and Shrek got cancelled because of COVID-19. It is tragic, yep. Julie. It certainly is. We were we we're about four weeks off opening because I sort of do it as a hobby as well now. Yeah, <laughs> so I do it yeah. as a job and I do it as a hobby. And I've got involved in amateur the amateur um, groups around Blackpool. And, uh, yeah, so that was where I was reprising my, uh, my Shrek. And we were just about four weeks off opening. The show yeah. was there. It was great, actually. There's a, it's a lot of talented people around here. It's quite, there's quite a lot of people like myself who – have trained or been in the industry and then and just doing it for stage time yeah. and uh, but we'd got a really great show so that's now postponed to october 2021 oh. <laughs> because because the thing is with this is the other thing this is the thing with amateur theater i mean we're all over the place with professional theater amateur theater um as well obviously that's going to take a, a proper bash in um, because the difficulty with that, of course, is everything's got to come together. So the venue's got to be available. The costumes have got to be available. The license, the set, all of that stuff has all got to be available in the same week. So then, so the nearest date that we could get <laughs> for doing that is October next year. So we've actually got another show booked in for Easter, So which is Kinky Boots. Yeah, oh, lovely. So we're sort of going to keep Shrek on the back burner and just... And, and let that bubble away and we'll keep rehearsing bits every so often um but hopefully again hopefully if we can get back in a rehearsal room so i mean obviously amateurs it's usually a massive group no sort of two or three handers it's a huge group of people yeah. um same scene really as the dance schools so we're hanging fire and seeing if we can actually start rehearsing because we would start rehearsing early october so it will all have changed by then i'm sure again yeah yeah yeah. So we have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask a question how it, it's going to work on the, the, the amateur side of things? Because with a professional production, say, sake of argument, th theatres were opened on the 1st of November, just say random number there. A professional cast could turn up and rehearse and be open within a couple of weeks. How much notice would uh, like a Shrek take before it could actually be put on? Because obviously you've, you've all got jobs to go to. Yeah. During the so daytime. if... If you're starting from nothing, so yeah. it, for example, so like Kinky Boots, so that will be starting from nothing. Um, we start in October and show will be Easter, which is it's the last week of March. So it takes all of that amount of time. Right. So I would be confident. <laughs> some of them you can do it a lot quicker. When I did Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, that was the first amateur show I'd done in about 20 years. And I thought it was just a bit of an opportunity. But the reason I did it is because the group that were doing it, they'd already done a show and it was they they um the license holders allowed a certain number of, of productions in that year, um, as it was the anniversary of the film. So um we did it, as Julie's just said, we did it in um 16 weeks. 15, 16 weeks, uh, but rehearsing three times a week. Ensemble-wise, for an amateur group, they only usually re rehearse once a week. Principals get two rehearsals maybe in a week, and then towards the end you add another one. So, yeah, it is it is really dif different because okay. it's such a long time. You could, if, if you put your mind to it, like with Chitty, and obviously that's a massively technical show, and in all honesty... <laughs> We didn't run Act 2. The first time we ran Act 2 on the set was for the audience <laughs> because we only managed 
Hey, because I, we only actually managed to get through <laughs> at one before the theatre said, right, you've got, you've had your time now, you've got to go. So the next day we opened and I, Baron Bombas opens Act Two. Turned around to everyone, went, good luck. <laughs> 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 and luckily, I mean, the, the car, actually, the car thing wasn't that bad. Um, but it was everything else. It's because because it's not their job. We're all used to being a lot more aware of where scenery and things are. And usually because we do it for a living, it, once we're told something, we might have had the stage marked out. We know where everything's going to be. It, it doesn't work like that with amateurs because um, in the nicest possible way, and I've, I've said this in the politest way before, I, I sit in a room of uh, grocers, doctors, nurses, um, cleaners, you know, and that's it, it's very it's a really different thing. And it was a bit of a shock to the system when I went back to it. But yeah. um, it's still great fun. But you, <laughs> I'll do anything to get on the stage at the moment. <laughs> well, I think any of us would, wouldn't we, really? What, yeah. What has kept you going uh, during lockdown? Is it, is it a book, film, TV, anything that is, you know, kept, kept you going? Chris, what do you think? Me? Um, I've, I've found a, a rekindled my childhood love of jigsaws. Ah. Um, it's been quite worryingly exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've done a lot of jigsaws, which have been good fun. I, I, it's, it's sort of changed because we've gone through sort of cycles within lockdown of not going out at all, going out a little bit once a day for one exercise, going out a bit more. It's hard to remember what happened in different stages, but I started doing a lot of cycling again. Uh, yeah. Roads were clear. And even when I wanted to go along like canal towpaths and stuff, I'd just go out at stupid o'clock in the morning at sort of like six, half six, just to go and uh, get a nice clean run. And it was beautiful to do that. And don't get me wrong. I'm not a morning person in the slide. There's a reason I do what I do for a living. And that's because I don't get up in the morning. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but that, that was an interesting phase. I think watching things wise, um, my partner is in Suffolk. That's why my bubble is going down there. But we watch things together, together on Netflix, et cetera, where we'll queue it up. Are you ready? On FaceTime, are you ready? Yeah, press play, press play. There we go. And we might WhatsApp during going, oh, they look a bit dodgy, don't they? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I reckon that person said something a little. So it's nice to be able to have that conversation that you'd normally have on a sofa. Yeah. With someone, albeit electronically, which isn't the same. And then at the end of the episode, that was good, wasn't it? We're going to do another one. Okay, play. So uh, box set-tastic, but nothing in particular. We've been working our way through Bosch recently. Uh, I like a crime drama. That's on their Netflix. Oh, okay. I, I thought you meant the home appliances. No. <laughs> I've, I've got a mixer. <laughs> it is odd, though, when you, you're in, you, you don't have anybody in your bubble with you. I mean, I, I live with my mother. The only contact I've had with another human being is when I put cream on my mother's feet. Um, you know, and... That doesn't do it for me, to be quite honest. <laughs> How have you come to you? I was really surprised, as probably as a lot of performers were, you're quite happy with your own company because you spend a lot of time on your own, often. Yeah. Um, and I thought, I'd just revert to my teenage years when I was very much a loner and I would just was just doing my music or whatever. And I really quickly, I, was, I surprised myself, I really quickly realised how much I missed going to my dance classes, going to the rehearsals, um, even going to the office and you know, just that actual <laughs> interaction with people. And then I, I realised I was probably more gregarious than I thought I was because yeah. I really did miss it. Um, well, you know, and we, are, we are tactile people in our industry. No, you oh, exactly. In a bank who go up to their colleagues and kiss them good morning no. and then them good night at the end it's just the way that we are we are very touchy feely that sounds dodgy i don't mean it to sound dodgy but it when that is suddenly completely taken away from you it took i think it was about three weeks in when i realized that i hadn't physically touched another human being for 21 days or whatever it was and that that was probably the first time that i got a little bit upset about it all so uh no it, it's although we are used to being by ourself and i completely agree it's still gets you in other ways that you don't expect mm. it i i know no, i had a, a, a lot of problem uh, I, I still can't concentrate for a lot of television and i'd love to watch you know the shows i've got on my planner and all that kind of stuff but i just don't have the concentration to to stick with them 
uh, for more than half an hour. You know, I, I, I pick the phone up and that's it. I'm off and I'm down that another rabbit hole. And it, it, it does affect you. I, and I haven't had the concentration to pick up a book and, and read. So it's, it's quite strange. And so I, I turn to other things like doing this show to to force people to talk to me. Damn it. <laughs> Well, yeah, so that's really why I started doing the the singing videos, and it really was only intended to do a little bit. Um, Julie, who's been commenting, she started yeah. by doing daily videos, um, and I thought, well, I'll do my bit for the cause as well. Yeah, and, Julie said, um, "Ew, I, I think that was about to my mother's feet." <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just started doing some bits and bobs, and it really was because Shrek we'd miss Shrek. So I thought, well, I'll do some Shrek songs. This is what you miss, folks. Um, yeah. and then it sort of just carried on. So that's kept me going. That has kept me going, doing yeah. those and thinking about what to do every day. But yeah, I have got a bit um box set tastic. I'm currently on Wentworth because uh, oh. again, my, my friend from the bank, Joe, has <laughs> said you really need to watch watch uh, Wentworth. So I mean, I'm sure Dave, you remember Prisoner Cell Block H from back in the day. And yes, it's. it's if, I don't know if you've seen Wentworth. It's the up upgraded version of that. So I'm getting into that. But I've, I've went back to watch Peaky Blinders, which I find very difficult being from the Midlands because of the accents because i really don't think they're that good but I've, yeah. I've got all the way through peaky blinders breaking bad i'd never done that so i was going back to it's almost got to vintage stage yeah i could yeah. do that but yeah definitely the singing that i suppose that's been my interaction people commenting and sending me nice nice messages about the songs and asking for songs and if it's somebody's birthday can you do something so that's that's been the nice bit of that yeah yeah um Anything else that you've been able to put out there, Chris? I know you've you've put out some bits of a video, haven't you? There was one out today that was a fundraiser for. Right, yes, I'm with you now. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, uh, the theatre <laughs> where I've done panto for the last few years, uh, Barry St Edmunds, the Theatre Royal in Barry St Edmunds. Yeah. Like theatres, they're well, like all theatres, they're struggling financially, and they set up a fundraiser to get fifty thousand pounds. Uh, I think it opened about three weeks ago, and they asked me. Well, they, they got they got lots of famous people to go. Oh, the theatre is wonderful. Yes, like Dame Judi Dench and Serena McKellen. And then they came to me and said, "Would you mind doing something?" Well, of course, yes, no problem. <laughs> With Dame Judi, <laughs> it was a Dame. <laughs> I went, "Oh, right, that's the reason." Right, okay, yes, yeah. of course, no problem. Um, and they said, "Have you got anything you could wear?" I went, "No, <laughs> I don't. Own, I've got makeup, but I've got yeah. none of the costumes." So they actually posted me. The top half of a costume uh, for me to record a little thing with them. And then I wondered uh, where that had come from. I yeah. thought you must have it at home. No, 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 no. It was a uh, Royal Mail special delivery. Ah, excellent. And what we put out this week, it was actually on Friday. We had a song in the show at Christmas called The Cleaning Song, which is based on, um, is it If I Was Not Upon This Stage, that song? So uh, I would be, yes. And it was the cleaning song in Panto, and it was basically the every, the audience gets squirted, carnage ensues, et cetera, et cetera. It was really good, and it was um, uh, one of the, the, the sort of the, the star moments of the show. And uh, somebody who came to see the show suggested that we did another version of it, a lockdown version. We thought, oh, that's a good idea. So we did, and we got there are uh, there were six of us cast in it. So it's the six of us in it's like a Zoom call with three windows, three windows, and then we've got two windows underneath which are the band got the, yeah. the drummer and uh we had about it was about three and a half weeks it took us to do it because obviously we're all remote but we wanted to do things to each other like putting things out of one side and it appearing in the box next door yeah so once we'd settled on rewriting the lyrics to make it appropriate for lockdown a theme to do it on the order in which it will happen we then worked out right what actions can go in different directions what can be dropped here that then appears down there and the timings that happens, we recorded a rehearsal version of it so somebody could edit all of our little windows together to go, right, that needs to be earlier, that needs to be later. And then we did the final recording last week, uh, an absolute whiz with a computer editing software uh, from who works at the theatre, but is furloughed, was obviously doing it on his, uh, his spare time like the rest of us. Yeah. Uh, he edited it all together and it, it's gone down really well. So we're quite pleased with that. So. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought the, the interaction between the boxes was was great. I like the bit where the flower dropped out of a top box onto the one below. The timing on that is so perfect. It looks absolutely spot on. 
yes it like it happened in real life as opposed to someone in kent and someone in liverpool as it was filming. yeah and i did i really loved the bit where the tuba player got up and walked out and yes. then swap boxes so those two must live together they do they're a couple in real life it was ah. Anne and smee uh and so yeah we we made sure that their boxes were together so uh smee got because smee was the but of everything that happened during the song anyway. He got the wettest and the covered in everything, all the rest of it. So we made sure he was central bottom so things could be dropped and thrown on him. He got punched out of his box into Peter Pan's box and Peter Pan then swapped back into Smee's box. Uh, and it, yeah, so it, it, it took us ages to work out how to do it, but uh, it seems to have gone down very well. So I'm quite chuffed by that. We'll have to get the link to that and I'll, I'll put it on the description bit. If you're watching this after the, the live event, uh, hopefully that will be down there uh, under, uh, underneath it's somewhere. On social media and YouTube. It's not actually on a website, so it'll have to be a link to a, a tweet or, or to YouTube. But yes. We'll find it. We'll find it. Uh, anything else coming up in the immediate future? Ian, you're working on stuff, but would you have been doing summer stuff? We would, uh, yes. Um, I'm hoping that I'll have some news about that in the next week or so. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, Tim, you know how hard Tim works. Um, mm -hmm. Tim also um, is chairman at Lowther Pavilion in, in Lytham, the theatre there. So he's he's been in a slightly unique position of running our company, uh, Pen Pendle Productions, and having a seat at the theatre to try and see what is uh, cap we're capable of hopefully he's talking to a lot of people and seeing if we can find a way of, of doing some outdoor theater in the summer. Cause normally we'd be on five or six days of per week all through the summer holidays. Yeah. Um, it's obviously going to depend on rules and regulations and on the specific um, local authorities. And if there are any venues and obviously then we need to be able to staff it because people will need to be kept apart. <laughs> there are a lot of things to be taken into consideration, but at least Live Nation are doing all of these drive-in concerts now. Uh, yeah. I understand that Glyndebourne is doing some outdoor performances uh, in their usual way, but because um, they normally do that, but I think they are being allowed to do them. So hopefully that will mean that other outdoor stuff will come up. So there's that. We're still hoping we are going to get Panto in. I think yeah. we're in a little bit of a, not a unique situation, but a, quite a privileged one because we obviously, Pendle Productions owns all their stuff. A lot of, medium-sized companies don't own the stuff they hire it off other people and there's that whole chain of things that need to happen so we're ready to go <laughs> if we've had we've talked about it already we're ready to go if anybody wants a panto we're ready to go because we've got it all in the cupboard yeah. um so i think that's that we are still keeping our fingers crossed but baby steps first see if we can get our outdoor stuff done and then we'll yeah. take it from there because that'll take us to september so and you know Chris, anything... hopefully Anything for you, Chris? Uh, no, you've... because I don't know what's going on yeah. at a given moment. You've Hopefully... got your bubble trip coming up, though, so that's something to look forward to. Oh, what, sorry? You've got your bubble trip. My bubble trip, yes. Well, it's my other uh, birthday on Wednesday, Thursday. So I'm going down on Wednesday. Get it right. Uh, yes. Well, it's I know the date. I just couldn't remember what day it was. So I'm going <laughs> down, uh, which will be fantastic, um, yeah. for a week or so, but... And oh, what I can do is I've got um, my voiceover kit. I actually, I've got a, like a packed down version I can take with me as well. And when I was down there a fortnight ago, um, fortunately, I, I, I got a, a TV advert, a voiceover for a TV advert. And I was able to go and set up a mini studio um, down at hers. And so I was able to still work even though I was away in my bubble. So it, it's funny, cool. though, isn't it? I mean, all, all the friends that I've got that have got the, the vo vocal setup at home. That is an area that has boomed. I, I know people are doing tons of audio books, uh, narration type stuff. I've done Radio 4 stuff from home. It's it's great to have the kit to be able to do it because it's all that's keeping us going, really. Yeah, true. It's it's not boomed quite as much as I think you're maybe purporting it to be because <laughs> not as much. <laughs> In relation to nothing. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, see, a lot of the stuff I do VO for are, are things like training videos. Yeah. And no then there's no one filming training videos at the moment because no one can go out and film anything like that so a whole swathe of my work disappeared when you've got um ivr work which is when you ring up telephone companies and say press one for this press two for this at the start of lockdown there's a mad rush on that for people to go we're currently closed for covid please get in touch with us at some point and that just stayed the same for 
four, five, six weeks. So that work happened and then that died as well. Yeah. So, I mean, not that I had any of that particular work, but a lot of my friends who do that, they, they, they lost all their stuff because the situation didn't change. Therefore, no one was changing what needed to go out on their phone lines. So yeah. there as much, and I don't know about you, the, 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 the actual TV adverts for which are all on Zoom calls, they yeah. just lined me up. They've been awful since the start, personally. I think they're terrible. They're yeah. so contrived. I can't wait for those to finish. Yeah, I know. Well, hopefully, we'll be back to some degree of normality soon. It's almost nine o'clock. It's time to say goodbye to you, gentlemen. Uh, thank you very, very much for being my guest this evening. It's been an honour and a privilege to see you. Um, I'm going to give you some applause. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and it's very well deserved. I mean, I will uh, be coming to watch you in Saucy Jack and the Space Fictions whenever it is on, because I I've not seen. Yes, it. well. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> uh, so my guests today have been Chris Clarkson and Ian Fox. <laughs> there we go. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, if you'd like to send some money off, the uh, Equity Benevolent Fund is helping uh, actors and anybody in the entertainment industry during this time. The address is there. I'll put the, the link in the description below the video as well. So please, if you have anything you can do, please help us out. Thank you very much, chaps. It's been lovely having you. I've got a big finale video coming up. Hang on a minute. Uh, let's see if I can get this to work. Uh, oh, that's the Equity Benevolent Fund. Uh, big finale video coming up uh, now. Thank you, guys. Have a great week. Goodbye.